Berlin is a city for dogs, so if you're somebody who doesn't like them, then this might not be the city for you. I'm kidding. But it actually might be hard for you to live here because you can't go like a few hundred meters without even bumping into one. Also, in general, Germans are huge dog lovers. Hello, my name is Carol and my husband and I have been blessed with Wancho since June 2018. Living in Berlin with a dog is super easy because you could practically bring them almost anywhere. I bring Wancho with me when I meet my friends or when I do my errands, so it's practically him and me all the time. Wancho is our happy responsibility and this is something that I really want to put an emphasis on before I start the video. This is because I take dog ownership very, very seriously and it is something that you should really take into consideration before you actually decide on getting a dog, especially since they form special bonds with their owners, masters, or parents, whatever you want to call yourself. Also, it is weird if you just let other people take care of your dog all the time, be it your friends or your helper, to pick up where you left off. This is something that you should really, really think about. And, you know, if you ever get tired of your dog and you have to give it away, then that's just really sad. So please, before actually deciding on getting a dog, make sure that you are really ready for it. So with all of that out of the way, here are some of the things that you should know before getting a dog here in Germany. Berlin, in particular. If you live in a rented property here in Berlin, then it is better to ask your landlord or your housemeister whether dogs are welcomed in your building. Of course, like most buildings allow them, especially if you have a long-term rental contract. However, it is still best to ask since there are a few buildings that don't allow dogs. As soon as you get your dog, it is best to get him or her registered, so a vet can help you with this. He or she will be given a microchip with a special number and you should register this number to Tasso.net which will make it easier for you to find your pet in case he or she gets lost. Another thing is you will be given a pet passport. This is Juancho's and yes, it says European Union and German Federal Republic. Uh, but I think he is very much Filipino at heart and also Danish because my dad will get sad if I don't say that. This passport has a number and you will also need it for the Tasso.net registration. And in here you will have your dog's information. So let me just... Okay. So you can also attach a picture of your pet. Yes. So once you have this, you can bring this to the vet every time you, your dog needs a checkup. And all the vaccines will be put in here, so all the records. And it's better that you have this with you every time you travel or every time you will visit your vet. Very important. Owning a dog in Germany requires you to pay for Hundesteuer or dog tax. I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly, but yes, it's dog tax. This is a practice that was common among European countries back in the day, but was already abolished a couple of years back. And Germany decided to keep their Hundesteuer because of a couple of reasons and one of this is to keep dog ownership under control so that you know nobody will have like way too many dogs unless they can actually afford it and also to keep dog owners responsible. Dog tax is 120 euros per year for your first dog but if you intend on getting a second dog or even more then it's 180 euros per following dog per year so it can get pretty expensive. The tax is waived only for the first year if your dog came from a shelter. Only guide dogs and dogs owned by diplomats are fully exempted from tax. Berlin has no problem when it comes to veterinarian shortage. There are so many in the city, but in case you're having a hard time finding one, then you should look for this symbol around your area. I'm sure you'll find somebody there. But in case you're still having a hard time finding your own vet, then I can definitely recommend one shows, especially if you're looking for somebody who can speak really, really good English. The doctors are also very patient with my questions and the nurses are always fawning over Wancho. They are the sweetest. I found this veterinary practice through my husband's colleague who owns a cat and she raved about the service. That's why when I tried them out, I never really went anywhere else because I was also equally happy with their service. The place is called Tier Ernstlich Gemeinschafts Praxis. I think I butchered that, but that basically means veterinary joint practice. And the main doctors there are like the team doctors Fuster. 
I'm gonna put the text here in case I'm butchering the language. I'm so sorry to all my German friends. You can find them at Hohenzollern Dam 185 and the nearest U-Bahn stations are Fairberliner Platz for U7 and Hohenzollern Dam for U3. Many European countries are incredibly dog friendly and Germany along with Italy are pretty high up that list. While you're out however, it is important for you to remember some rules. First, dogs must always, always be on a leash. This rule was often overlooked the past couple of years since most dogs in Berlin are trained very well. Like they would walk right beside their owners without a leash and they would even wait for them before crossing the street. It is such a cute sight to see. However, there was an announcement that starting January 1st of this year, this rule will already be strictly enforced. However, you can still walk with your dog leash free in designated areas like the Hunde Park or maybe in some forest areas or like really big green meadows. Of course, just make sure that your dog is well trained and well socialized when you do this. You must also pick up your dog's poo. A lot of the major European cities have this problem, but I personally feel after traveling in most of them that Germany is doing pretty well when it comes to making sure that this doesn't get out of hand. This is because of the strict policy when it comes to the fine. If somebody from the Ordnungsamt or the regulatory body that makes sure everybody in the heats follows certain ordinances, kind of like the German version of the Bande Tandon for Filipinos out there. So if they see you do this, then they can actually fine you with like 35, starting at 35 euros and it can go up to thousands. Of course, the Ordnungsamt is not there all the time and if you're somebody who just refuses to pick up your dog poo, then I sincerely hope you get caught because this isn't a laughing matter. It's such a pet peeve of mine. Like, I feel bad for people who step on dog poo. By the way, I can highly recommend these plastic baggies which I get from TK Maxx these are like the bigger size ones uh, it says earth rated and for a bag of 300 I got it only for two euros and 99 cents so it's pretty affordable it doesn't even cost you much so just get a bag and clean up after your dog really another thing that's required for your dog is the Hunde Haftpflicht Versicherung or the dog liability insurance Yes, that's just one word and it is an insurance for when your dog gets somebody into an accident or causes damage to certain properties. So just Google this very long word and make sure that you use Google Chrome so that it gets translated automatically for you. Just today we received an offer from Checker and another company that I know of is Aguila and this is the one that's recommended by my trainer. Dog training in Berlin is actually very popular because there is a certain level of expectation when it comes to bringing your dog in public here in Germany. Like, you know, they're supposed to behave a certain way, especially if you're dining out or you're shopping. One thing that I found hard here in Berlin was to find a dog trainer that was doing the training in English. Like, in a class setting. I wanted to train with one show in a class because one-on-one -on -one training would have been a bit more expensive. It's normally minimum 50 euro per hour per dog. And if I go to a Hundeschule where they do the classes in German, I would really have to ask the teacher to translate for me all the time. And most of them are very much willing to do that, but I find it embarrassing to keep asking, especially since you know I'm delaying the class and everybody's paying by the hour. So I was really, really happy when I found Kirsten of Good Dog Berlin. And she does trainings in English, so all her classes are like that. And she also organizes social walks during the weekends. So sorry about that, uh, my battery died and now I have to turn on the lights as well because the sun is setting and it's winter so that happens really quickly. We also have a special guest, somebody decided to join me. Hello! So back to Kirsten, a lot of diplomatic and expat families go to her for training because of her expertise and she is very very good with Wan Cho and all the other dogs that she's been training. Just after two training sessions in Mitte and after one social walk with her in Malo, then that went really really well for Wancho. Like I've seen so much improvement when it comes to obedience and recall, so I can highly recommend her. Each class costs 15 euros per dog per hour, so it's not so much and compared to doing like a one-on-one -on -one class and I really really believe that it's worth it. There are more restaurants that allow dogs than those who don't 
and for dog owners here in Berlin, of course, that is very, very good. Most of the servers in restaurants and cafes would also offer them water and even treats sometimes. And if they don't do it, then it's always you know, normal to ask for water for your dog. Most malls and department stores allow dogs. Uh, Karstadt is the first thing that comes to mind. I can easily just bring one to there. There are no issues. Uh, the malls that don't allow it are Cadive and Alexa, but I can normally bring him if he's in his buggy. A lot of people will judge you for having your dog in a buggy, believe me. <laughs> but sometimes it is actually necessary, especially for a dog like Pancho who has short legs, a long back, and is prone to hip and back problems in old age. Oh, knee problems as well. So you really can't overtire him. And the thing is, if I want to bring him with me to these establishments, then I need to put him on there and he actually enjoys it. Some more places where dogs are not allowed are groceries and supermarkets. Uh, some drugstores like the Drogery Mart or Rossmann, but sometimes I get away with getting him in there as long as he's in the buggy as well. But supermarkets are definitely a no. Some bakeries as well, uh, the Schaefer's near our place doesn't allow dogs inside even though they have like a seating area for their cafe, it's not allowed. But most cafes in Berlin, they actually allow dogs. So it's a bit tricky. What you have to do is just look for the no dog sign. Playgrounds for kids, um, cinemas, they also don't allow dogs. Uh, the Stadtbads or like the public swimming pools and saunas, of course. Museums also don't allow them and the messes or the uh, the big halls where they do their trade fairs. Some lakes with designated swimming areas also do not allow dogs, but don't worry because they have their own area where they can swim. It's called Grunewald See and it is inside the forest of Grunewald and it's a lake that's specially for dogs. Taking your dog on public transport here in Berlin is perfectly allowed. So bigger dogs need to pay for a ticket with a reduced fare and the smaller dogs get to travel for free. I think the standard for small is the terrier so that's the biggest you can go. Uh, for Juancho, he doesn't get asked for a ticket because he's so short and doesn't really take up too much space as well. So it really depends on your inspector as well. Also, they especially don't mind when he's on his buggy. We have also taken Juancho traveling with us by train within Germany and even outside the country. So that was a very, very fun experience, which I should talk about next time and also tell you like all the things that you need to know about that. But you know, that should be for another video because this is already getting too long. For now, I'm going to have to say goodbye because it's starting to get really, really dark. It's only uh, 4 p.m. here in Berlin, but you know, the sunset is pretty early during this time during winter. If you have any more questions or if you feel like I missed out on something, then please leave them in the comment section down below. I will try to get to them as soon as possible. If there are a lot, then maybe I can answer them in a video next time. So yeah, with that said, thank you so much for watching and Juancho and I will see you guys again soon. Okay? Oh yeah, yeah, he wants his belly rubs now. Okay, bye guys!